Reading closely and writing to learn. Poetry, poets, and becoming writers. Unit three, lesson one. Guiding question. What inspires writers to write poetry? When you think back to the book, Love That Dog, you know that Jack, in the first few pages of the book, he wrote the poem, Blue Car. So much depends upon a blue car, splattered with mud, speeding down the road. And you can tell that he was inspired to write this poem because of William Carlos Williams' poem, The Red Wheelbarrow, which is, so much depends upon a red wheelbarrow glazed with rainwater beside the white chicken. I wonder what inspired William Carlos Williams to write The Red Wheelbarrow. Today, you're going to be reading a biography of William Carlos Williams, and we may be able to answer that question, what inspired him to write poetry, poetry like The Red Wheelbarrow. Learning targets. I can identify the text features of a river of words. I can define the word biography, and I can determine the gist of a river of words. What is a biography? Let's break that word down and figure out what each part of the word means. Bio means life. Graph means to write. So a biography is a text written about someone's life. Today you will be reading a biography of William Carlos Williams. A River of Words, written by Jen Bryant, illustrated by Melissa Sweet. While you read today, we will be pausing to find the gist of different parts of the book. Locate this form in your purple workbooks now. Pause the video if you need time to find this form. A River of Words, written by Jen Bryant, illustrated by Melissa Sweet. When I was younger, it was plain to me, I must make something of myself. William Carlos Williams, Pastoral. Think about what this quote tells us about William Carlos Williams. Obviously, we're thinking about what inspires poets to write poetry. And so I think this quote really helps bring that to light. He wants to make something of himself. In other words, he wants to say something to the world. And he's done that through his poetry. Like the other boys in Rutherford, New Jersey, Willie Williams loved to play baseball and to race his friends up and down the street. But when the other boys went inside, Willie stayed outside. Climbing over the fence in his backyard, he wandered alone through the woods and fields. In those days, just beyond town, there were still many wild places for Willie to explore. My Willie has sharp eyes. He notices everything, his mother told the neighbors. And it was true. As he walked through the high grasses and along the soft dirt paths, Willie watched everything. When he grew tired, he stretched out beside the Passaic River. Gurgle, gurgle, swish, swish, swoosh, gurgle, gurgle. The water went slipping and sliding over the smooth rocks, then poured in a torrent over the falls, then quieted again below. The river's music both excited and soothed Willie. Sometimes, as he listened to its perfect tune, he fell asleep. Now it's time to record the gist of the section that you just read. Remember, the gist answers two questions. Who or what is it about? What happens to him, her, or it? Pause the video now in order to do this section in your purple workbook. You can back the video up if you need to listen to that section again. As Willie grew older, there was less time to wander through the woods and fields or to nap by the river. In high school, Willie had classes and track practice and lots of homework. Willie is always in a hurry, his mother told the neighbors, and it was true. But when Mr. Abbott read poetry to Willie's English class, Willie did not feel hurried. The gentle sounds and shifting rhythms of the poems were like the music of the river. As the teacher read each line, Willie closed his eyes and let them make pictures in his mind. One night, alone in his room, Willie began to write his own poems. 
At first, he imitated the famous English writers he had learned about in school. He counted the beats in each line and made the endings rhyme. The archer is awake, the swan is flying, gold against blue, an arrow is lying. Poetry suited Willie. Every night he looked forward to sitting at his desk and writing a few new lines. But after a while, he grew frustrated. He had pictures in his mind that didn't fit exactly into steady rhythms or rhymes. I have never seen a swan or an archer, Willie thought. I want to write about ordinary things. Plums, wheelbarrows and weeds, fire engines, children and trees. Things I see when I walk down my street or look out my window. In the beginning, I asked the question, I wonder what inspired William Carlos Williams to write the poem, The Red Wheelbarrow. I believe his biography just answered that question. So I want you to take a moment and think about it. Pause the video if you need more time. So Willie tried writing a new way. Instead of counting the beats or making the end words rhyme, he let each poem find its own special shape on the page. There is a bird in the poplars. It is the sun. The leaves are little yellow fish swimming in the river. Now when he wrote poems, he felt as free as the Passaic River as it rushed to the falls. Willie's notebooks filled up one after another. My boy is a good writer, his mother said, and it was true. Unfortunately, no one paid much money for poetry, and Willie needed to earn a living. Now it's time to record the gist of the section that you just read. Remember, the gist answers two questions. Who or what is it about? What happens to him, her, or it? Pause the video now in order to do this section in your purple workbook. You can back the video up if you need to listen to that section again. Willie's mother had told him stories about her older brother, Carlos, who was a doctor. When our father died, she told Willie, Carlos's salary provided for our whole family. Willie liked the idea of healing people and of providing for a family. Could he do both and still write poetry? At age 19, Willie went off to study medicine at the university, where he met Ezra Pound, Hilda Doolittle, and Charles DeMuth. Ezra and H.D. were studying literature, while Charlie studied painting. The friends spent many afternoons together, discussing books, music, and art. The harder Willie's medical training became, the more he enjoyed the time he spent with them. Take a look at the artwork on this page. Particularly on the right side, I see the poem, The Great Figure, which we've already studied. It says, among the rain and lights, I saw the figure five. And so you see a lot of artwork inspired um, by William Carlos Williams' poetry. And I also noticed the name Charles de Muth. And I remember when we looked at the poem, The Great Figure, um, we saw some artwork done by Charles de Muth, and it was that great big number five um, inspired by William Carlos Williams' poem, The Great Figure. When he graduated, he returned to Rutherford and hung his sign, William C. Williams, M.D., Family Medicine. Every morning, Dr. Willie Williams filled his black bag with medicines and instruments and drove off to visit patients in their homes. Every afternoon, he returned to his office where more patients waited. Now it's time to record the gist of the section that you just read. Remember, the gist answers two questions. Who or what is it about? What happens to him, her, or it? Pause the video now in order to do this section in your purple workbook. You can back the video up if you need to listen to that section again. All day he delivered babies, healed hurts and bruises, set broken bones, and wrote prescriptions for coughs and fevers. Dr. Williams is the busiest man in town, said the neighbors, and it was true. But no matter how many babies he delivered, no matter how many sick people he cured, Willie could not stop writing poems. On his prescription pads, he scribbled a few lines whenever and wherever he could. In those precious times, the rhythm of the river had 
he had rested beside as a child seemed to guide him, like the water that sometimes ran slow, smooth, and steady, and other times came rushing in a hurried flood, Willie's lines flowed across the page. Take a look at the artwork on these pages. I noticed the poem, The Red Wheelbarrow, talking about that. So just take a moment and take a look at that. After his long doctor's day, Willie climbed to the attic where he kept a lamp and a desk filled with letters from his artist friends and notes he'd made about things he'd heard, seen, or done. As the rest of Rutherford put out its lights, Willie took out his pen and his notes. He sat down and looked at the words and shaped them into poems. Now it's time to record the gist of the section that you just read. Remember, the gist answers two questions. Who or what is it about? What happens to him, her, or it? Pause the video now in order to do this section in your purple workbook. You can back the video up if you need to listen to that section again. Now that we've finished the book, and we've finished recording the gists for all four parts, answer the last question. How does this text fit the definition of a biography? Give an example from the text. Remember that biography means a text written about someone's life. So using that definition, go ahead and answer this question now. After reading the biography of William Carlos Williams, what can you infer about what inspired him as a writer. That's what I want you to think about, going back to our guiding question. And at the beginning, I asked you, what do you think inspired William Carlos Williams to write The Red Wheelbarrow? End of lesson one.